Greetings, unsettled souls. Welcome to the correct views. Sam I B. DeGangie doing political commentary for the Media Speaks. And before you say, that was a sloppy beginning, you try syncing up two cameras once when one of them are live. Friends, welcome aboard. Sam I. B. DeGangie uh, doing political commentary for the Media Speaks. For those of you that say, you should tie your hair back if you're going to be a reporter. I'm not a reporter. I'm a political commentator. Reporters must be unbiased. I am not unbiased. I am correct. And sometimes... Someone is correct, and you don't like them. And they're correct enough that you make it your lead-off story, and that's what I'm doing. Now, before I get into what he was right about, Chris Christie has... I am more likely to take my flaccid penis and ram it into an electric pencil sharpener than I am to vote for Chris Christie in the primaries, just to be clear. Don't tell me that you like Chris Christie. Oh, yeah, way to go, Sam. You've seen the light. No, I haven't. For those of you that hate Chris Christie's policies, I'm with you, okay? But he's right on this. It's a correct view. It doesn't mean I have to like the guy. It doesn't mean I have to think he was a great governor. I don't. But this is important. And I think it's important that it's in the Japan Times. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, a campaigning for president in New Hampshire, said the U.S. would have no right to stop Israel from using military force to destroy Iran's nuclear program. Israel is a sovereign nation. It goes without saying that they don't need... Everybody in the, the liberty movement have been saying forever. Ron Paul said this. Ron Paul said that he was sure that Israel could more than take care of itself. Remember that? Chris Christie saying the same thing. Um, do I want Israel to do that? If they're going to, they should have already done it. And here's my concern. And this is where I want everyone listening to simply hear me out on this topic. All that matters, the only thing that matters, is that the same people that predicted the massive earthquake, that how hard did the earthquake hit in Japan in, on 9-11, on, 9 -11, on uh, March, March 11th, how hard, how hard did it hit? It changed the axis of the earth. The same people that predicted that and we know that not all four reactors melted down due to uh, the tsunami. Only two of them did. The other two were melting down as of the earthquake. The same ones that predicted that earthquake that we know can cause meltdowns, melt throughs, and melt outs. Well, and that for those of you that don't know what all that why all that matters, it pretty much means you get cancer. Um, we are hearing the same scientists saying now that there's going to be an earthquake of that magnitude right where Iran is building the nuclear power plant. So for those of you that say Iran is peaceful, I hate Israel, and they should be allowed to do whatever they want, you're wrong. They're going to have a meltdown, and it has nothing to do with Jews. For those of you that support Israel, and you say, the Iranian plant absolutely cannot open because they're going to bomb the Jews, you are also missing the point and are just as wrong. Even if Iran was peaceful, even if Israel loved the idea of Iran doing it, two things that would never happen. Israel would still be wrong. They'd still be missing the point. The earthquake that is mathematical, scientific, provable fact by the same people that were ignored when it was going on, when it was being predicted, I should say, before in Japan, are the same people that are ignoring the science now that the same scientists are saying is going to hit Iran. It is maddening to me because even Chris Christie managed to not 
mention this. It is not a political issue. It is not about Christ. It is not about Allah. It is not about uh, Jews. It is about an earthquake that is going to kill more Arabs than every Jew that has ever lived. Do you understand this? And it's maddening to me. It's maddening because you never hear anyone talk about this. Never, ever, any freaking where. And the last time you heard this deafening silence, we got what we got in Fukushima. And for those of you that follow this, the massive Fukushima update will be next week along with the dunce cap. Um, this is why I'm saying what Chris Christie is proclaiming right here is exactly what Ron Paul said. And that's pretty much where the similarities end. Christie said Wednesday at a Republican forum that he'd look to have a conversation with Israel prior to any military action, which he said would be the proper course for friends and allies. A former federal prosecutor, Christie, 52, has called for expanding the military and government intelligence gathering as part of his foreign policy. Who wants a federal prosecutor as president? Um, again, Israel is a sovereign nation. Why the hell would they have to ask us for permission? That's ridiculous. Um, but anyway, Chris Christie's finally right about something. It says he's trying to jumpstart his campaign. Supposedly, uh, he was wanted so much by businessmen to run against Obama, and now that he didn't, those businessmen have left him down. Maybe they just realized that they wanted anybody, anybody at all, and they, they chose him. Because let's face it, Chris Christie is the, the worst of the worst. He, you vote for him, you might as well just you might as well vote for Jeb. All right, friends, we have a massive gun update. And we have three stories right smack, boom, 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 in a row about guns saving innocent lives. How many innocent lives? We don't know, but we know for sure that one of them looked like it was going to be a mass shooting that was uh, was stopped by uh, lawful gun ownership and responsibility. Listen to this, Mikhail Phelan. Prison Planet, a Wisconsin clothing store owner, opened fire on a group of attempted robbers last week and successfully defended both, both his business and his life. May God bless him. Rami Maru, owner of the Milwaukee-based Buchard's clothing store, posted video of the encounter to the company's Instagram account Thursday with a stark warning to any other potential burglars. And again... You're, you're, use, you're going to use the gun to, uh, to, 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 to come more harm than good. Well, Remy Marura saved his life and his business thanks to it. Listen to this. Just to set the record straight, we go to work to make our living and to feed our families, not to have shootouts, Marura wrote. Don't come to our establishments with guns or try breaking in our stores and expect less than us defending ourselves. And if this is what it's going to take, then let it be. We will protect our business and our employees at any cost. Amen. According to Murr, who was armed with an AR-15 rifle, and no, that does not stand for assault rifle, one suspect was shot after the would-be robbers attempted to crash a stolen van through Buchard's front door. Detailing the dumb criminal's mistake in the video description, I like Moore. He reminds me of a person I'd like to have a beer with. Moore confirmed that at least one of the men were arrested following the incident. The video also shows the perfect example of dumb criminals. And to keep in mind, we haven't even gotten to the dumb D yet. We have two of those at the end. One, you steal a van. Two, crash the stolen van into a store and make all of that loud noise when it's quiet at night. Three, I guess it was in a residential area. Don't expect anyone to be monitoring or securing their small business. business. Four, get shot. Five, get arrested. Six, leave with nothing. The golden goose egg, friends. At the end of the day, it's just some clothes. It's not worth anyone's life. An alleged friend, Moore, commenting on Facebook, stated that the business had previously been hit by criminals multiple times. Oh, he's trigger happy. He's trigger happy. Uh, no. He wasn't. I doubt he was out trying to shoot minorities since he was one. And again, I don't even know what the people look like that robbed him. I have no idea. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The only people that want it to matter are the people on the left. 
Uh, he's been robbed a few times, and his business has been broken into many times before, said Mike Alisawilia. His own brother was shot and almost killed during a robbery of their store not that long ago, and he's had enough. It's time to start blasting back at these scumbags. And I agree. So if it wasn't for his firearm, he probably would have died that night. I think he probably would have. Idiot. All right, more. Uh, the last, I promised you three stories here. Internet is so slow. It's not an internet, it's an abacus. Um, I've got InfoWars here, and it says one that probably will not be reported on. Uh, one that won't make the headlines. Man with concealed carry permit prevents mass shooting and saves lives of three people, including a one-year-old. Oh, no, but if he has guns, he could flip out at any moment. Well, if you have enough people with guns, it's very unlikely that everyone's going to flip out at any given moment. And um, somebody is going to stop the one idiot that did. Steve Watson, InfoWars. Here's Aaron. God, the internet is slow tonight. Sorry, listeners. Quite sorry. Trying to quote this for you. But I, you know exactly where it's going to go, just the same. Cincinnati uh, Fox 19. Here's the story that won't make many headlines in the mainstream media because it doesn't neatly fit into the anti-Second Amendment agenda. That is the uh, government's wish to take your guns away. In Ohio, finally good news from Ohio, concealed carrier prevented a tragedy Sunday as he fired upon a man who was trying to kill a woman that he got in an argument with, as well as her one-year-old child and innocent bystanders. Cincinnati Fox 19 reports the 62-year-old Thomas McCary pulled a gun on Patrick Ewing, and when Ewing attempted to settle a dispute between his own sister, Jeanita Walker, and McCrary. McCrary shot at Ewing three times, according to the report, prompting Ewing to pull out his own firearm, to which he had a concealed carry license. So once again... Somebody doing the right thing with a gun has saved the lives of uh, untold numbers of people here. We know at least three. Uh, who knows if he was shooting a bystanders, how many there were. <sighs> Americans think guns can help prevent crime, it says in the story. I think, my foot, we just kind of proved that it did now, didn't we? It says uh, he was, McCrary was eventually arrested and taken to the hospital where he was treated and released into police custody. So at least he didn't die. And again, I mean, you could be one of the bystanders. Maybe he doesn't kill you. Maybe he paralyzes you, and you get to spend the rest of your life in a wheelchair. Does that sound like fun? Because it doesn't to me. I like bowling. I like snowboarding. I'm not that great at either one of them, but that's beside the point. No, that doesn't sound fun to me. So there's somebody doing the right thing in Ohio, too, and we do carry here. Uh, guys, Washington Times, if you don't believe that I have sources, go ahead and look this up. But get ready for the, the, the site with 10 million ads and videos that won't stop playing and an endless headache if you want. It. It, it's better just to trust me. Uh, Washington Times, murder rates drop as concealed carry permits soar, according to a report. You always hear, you can't trust the info wars, you can't trust this. You... All right, well, how about if you trust big media so much? Here you go, the Washington freaking Times. The number of concealed carry handgun permits has skyrocketed since President Obama was elected. No wonder there. While murder rates have fallen, repeat, gone down according to a new report released on Wednesday. A lot of the shootings that are happening now are real high profile. That's because uh, we have really weird shootings lately. Uh, and um, also so many of them have been part of the race baiting that uh, the left wants to do. But when you look at the actual numbers, as concealed carry permits go up in states, those states are seeing a massive drop in murder rates. Since 07, the number of concealed carry handgun permits has soared from 4.6 million to 12.8. And uh, what do we see? We see a drop in everything that everyone's worried about when they want to take our guns. And that should alarm you because throughout history, it happened in Rome, it happened in Germany, it's happened in Russia, it's happened in China. You disarm the populace and then you can do whatever you want to them. 
It says the number of permits issued is increasing faster every year. Over 1.7 million new permits were issued last year at 15.4% increase of 13 since uh, 2013. The number of concealed carriers is likely to go higher since permits are not required in eight states. Shall not be infringed. Gun rights advocates say that the findings in the report fall in line with their personal experience and research and directly refute the liberal argument that more guns lead to more violence. It puts the lie to the myth promulgated by the anti-gun individuals that somehow more law-abiding citizens carrying guns will lead to more crime. In fact, quite the opposite is the case, said Larry Keene, Senior Vice President and General Counsel for National Shooting Sports Foundation. More law-abiding citizens own firearms for self-protection and crime continues to go down. A decrease. It helps. An armed society is a polite society. And let's face it, uh, my wife, that feels odd to say, that's awesome. My wife isn't that big. And you might think two or three people could easily take her out. We live in a concealed carry state. See how an armed society quickly becomes a very polite society. Now suddenly she's Mrs. DeGange. All right, um, friends, three more, uh, yeah, three more stories to get to. But I had to get to this. Snicker Junkie sponsors the show. So, of course, I'm going to shout them out. But that's not why I'm doing it. I actually support Sticker Junkie. Why? Because these stickers that I'm holding up and you guys that aren't watching are going to know what I'm talking about, but they look great. They were designed by Sticker Junkie. They're my band stickers. I go to uh, the correct views at hotmail.com and they're a dollar a piece. We'll send them out to you. They were made by Sticker Junkie. So if you want your stickers looking that amazing, then get a hold of Sticker Junkie. Tell David Lake that you heard about it on the correct views and uh, you'll get a discount for doing that. I promise you. Also, I want to give a shout out to Mike McLaughlin, a huge supporter of the show and a writer. You know how happy I am to have a writer as a supporter of the show? When's the last time you saw an ad, even on mainstream TV? Stephen King, there's never, never an ad for his books on TV. Um, how about Dean Koontz? Huge writer, never. Readers are dropping like flies. Our country is getting stupider and stupider. And if, you, if you're one of the people that read and you want to read something good, Go to Facebook.com, look up Mike McLaughlin, and let him know you heard about it from the correct views. Three reasons to avoid food additives. What do you do to avoid additives? This is Dr. Edward Group of uh, very useful information here. That's also linked on InfoWars. I think it was on Drudge, but don't quote me on that. Food additives are added to food during processing, typically to enhance flavor or freshness. While some of them are natural, many aren't, and those unnatural additives have nasty side effects. Now, if you're somebody that's not used to the show and you're going to zone out, two reasons you don't want to zone out. One is because we're going to get to two of the dumdiest dumdies ever for the dumdie of the day at the end. And second of all, this is going to uh, really wake you up. Uh, my, my mother-in-law has been with us since the wedding, and she drinks pop like a fish she drinks water. And I thought of her as soon as I saw this. Food additives damage your heart. A recent study suggests eating lots of phosphate-rich foods like soda, processed cheese, and I do love cheese. I've avoided that since Fukushima. If you don't know why, look up cesium and cheese, and you will too. Baking powder, I didn't know that, and many processed foods increases production of FGF23 hormone, which can put a strain on one's heart. Research from the American Heart Association also suggests men, lucky me, should cut processed meat out of their diets because of an increased risk of heart failure. The good news is for that, I, I eat too much fast food, unfortunately. But when I do eat steak or something, it's usually at a really nice restaurant or it's at, uh, like, Christelle and I have begun buying organic food uh, like that. Now, you can't afford to eat all organic unless you're rich. I understand that. The, the, the organic food producers are part of the problem because it's unbelievably expensive. However, how often do you eat steak? Unless you want to look like Chris Christie, you, you don't do it too often. So we tend to get organic steak, and I recommend you do the same for the reason that I just gave you. And there's only three of these, so don't zone out. Two, food additives disrupts hormone balance. Uh, as mentioned above, the FDA doesn't really regulate what's in our food. 
That said, a recent study found that propyl paraben, an endocrine disruptor in many American snacks, should be avoided. If paraben sounds uh, in, uh, familiar to you, it's because uh, another organic uh, that I insist upon is underarm deodorant. Unfortunately, I, I use Axe, which I probably shouldn't because it's not organic. But if it has parabens in it, those can leach into your skin and give you various cancers, particularly women Tata cancer. And last but not least, food additives make for unruly kids. We already know that. Uh, it says that it can make them hyper. It's due to the hydronized vegetable protein. I don't want to bore you to death, but it can be bad for your kids. Um, especially if they're already prone to being hyper, it might be better than putting them on drugs just to see if you can get them. Again, you can get organic chocolate. You don't need to get all organic, just the real problem foods. And, uh, and friends, that brings us to the dum dee dum -dees. More than one, there's two of them. dum -dees of the day. Uh... Oh, yeah. Ice cream shop serves abortion-inspired flavor for a Planned Parenthood fundraiser. Now, friends, hear me out. Hear me out. I'm, I'm going to get so much hate for this. I'm on the fence about first trimester. I still think it's not a real grand idea, but I don't have anything against someone that maybe has made a mistake. Maybe the condom broke. Maybe you were young, 16, thought you were in love. Those that wish to say that they are totally pro-life, I respect that. I am mostly, I, I, but again, the things happen. Things happen. Um, some model, you can't get all stretched out. Maybe her modeling career is taking off and she gets pregnant. Take care of it the morning after pill or something. Fine. To me, anyway. I'm not going to say it's fine. I'm not God. But... Some of this is just disgusting. And I have been the one who's been a little bit more on Planned Parenthood's side, only in two ways. First of all, I don't think, I think Rand Paul is right. Uh, we should not be funding abortions with the federal government because we've said it a million times, things that are not outlined in the Constitution are relegated to the states. That means the states should vote on things like health care. The federal government shouldn't be in it at all. Second of all, Planned Parenthood has been allowed to use tissue from aborted fetuses to, uh, to, for things like stem cell research and such. I'm not completely against that either. I'm against the selling of it. I mean, that's just sick. I was under the impression that the, the, after the abortion, the set, I mean, I didn't know that they were hacking at it in certain ways and selling it like to make a Frankenstein monster or something. That's disgusting. I think that needs to stop. Um, the other thing you need to remember with Planned Parenthood is most women that go to Planned Parenthood do not do so for abortions. And I work in a strip club, so please don't argue with me. I'm a DJ and it's in one. Don't argue with me because I, I promise you I'm right. Sometimes the female body does things that it should not do. And when it does those things, it is best to see a doctor that can fix them. And many times the only ones that can afford this Planned Parenthood. Um, I had an ex, and that's all I'm going to say, that had a infection when she was sick. And it created what's called a fistula. And it spread from one private part to the back door private park. And it was an absolute nightmare. And if it wasn't for Plan Planned Parenthood, she'd have probably died waiting uh, for treatment or whatever. So you don't want to throw the baby out with the bath, bath water, but I would love to see Planned Parenthood replaced by just about anything. Sanger was a monster who started it. Um, the care you get there is it's better than dying, but again, we can do better. I don't think we need to be paying, the federal government needs to be paying for abortions. And I don't think that people need to be doing things like bowling for abortion, which uh, we've reported on that. You can look it up on the channel. But this here, this is so far removed from anything that I could ever be in favor of that it's not even funny. This is where I begin to wonder if all the pro-life people who are totally pro-life aren't maybe 100% right. 
Alan Salazar Infowars, a pro-abortion ice cream shop in Oregon. We just reported on Oregon spying on where you drive to and trying to tax you. What's with Oregon lately? They whipped up a special flavor for its recent Planned Parenthood fundraiser. What's the scoop? In Portland, it is evidently unfazed by a recent sting of videos that showed Planned Parenthood administrators apparently profiting from the sale of aborted fetal organs. Oh, what's the scoop? Okay, that's the name of the place. So now you know who to call and complain and otherwise boycott. According to a Facebook post, a small batch of ice cream a, the small batch ice cream shop held a fundraiser at the state's Planned Parenthood chapter last week, unveiling the taste of victory flavor. Help support this wonderful organization. Now, if they had just raised money for abortion, that's fine. I mean, I wouldn't do so, but let's face it, it's their right to do so. It's about to get disgusting. We will be hosting a fundraiser to benefit the Planned Parenthood Advocates of Oregon. And what's the scoop from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m., the Facebook post read. So you can find what's the scoop on Facebook if you are listening to the show. And I do the dumpties so you'll you're, you're point the idiots out in society like I do. 10% of all proceeds during the hours will be donated. 10%. So it's really just about getting 90% of the profit for themselves anyway. 10%, how many, 10% on a $3 ice cream, how very kind of you. I'm sure that'll, that, that, that'll buy a, a tenth of an abortion for someone um, if they really need it. Good job. Taste of Victory is described as an ice cream containing Oregon strawberries and white chocolate freckles. They deliberately made an ice cream that looked like an abortion and sold it to raise money for abortions. The small chunks of strawberry flesh may harken back for some images suggested by Planned Parenthood Senior Director Deborah Nutakola, who successfully discussed removing vital organs from aborted babies for profit. So in other words, they're called What the Scoop. What's the Scoop? You can find them on Facebook. And they absolutely have no couth whatsoever. I have a question. Um, if, you're, if you're a pro-choice person, don't you still find that really disgusting? I imagine so. All right, friends, and that brings us to what is the last of the dumdies of the day. Now, if you don't know what these are, each and every uh, month I do the Dunce Cap of the Month Award, where I go through maybe a half hour or more longer of the stupidest stories that I have found in the entire time that I was collecting for that month. And sometimes at the end of each show, I do the dumdie of the day all the time, but we end up with so many dumdies that you couldn't possibly get to them on the dunce cap of the month that's why there's two of them today oh yes Kurt Nemo Obama readies a transgender military now before we go on I'm a pretty I'm a pretty pretty open-minded person. I myself do not dress in women's clothes. Uh, I, I've been accused of it because I'll do the whole fishnet goth black makeup thing. But in terms of looking nice and dainty, my dear, I don't know. Not my cup of tea. Don't care if it's yours. It's fine. To each their own. I don't think you need to be praised for it or win the award or uh, like, you know, Jenner or something, but I don't care what you do. It's none of anybody's business as long as you're not trying to hurt anybody else. But I don't even care if gays are in the military. I, I was all in favor of don't ask, don't tell. It makes some people uncomfortable, and you don't want uncomfortable people guarding your life. Even if I was gay. If I thought that it made the guy that was going to cover me in heavy fire nervous, then I probably wouldn't tell him. Um, I do all kinds of sins. If I'm sitting in church, I'm not just going to bring them up to see how uncomfortable I can make everyone. You, you just don't do that. That's the same thing you're going to see here. A lot of people that I know in the military probably don't give a damn whether you wear a dress or not. If you're guarding them, if you are an MP, if you are a soldier, if you are doing your job, then that is what matters. However, this is going to take it too far. And again, for the reason I just outlined, whether it's right or wrong, I don't care. It's going to get somebody killed. It could be wrong. It's still going to get somebody killed. That's, if it's wrong, it's still not going to make them less dead. How's that for a correct view? On Monday, 
Obama's defense secretary said the Pentagon's ban on transgender individuals is outdated, and the administration has ordered the study to end the practice. Do you realize that when uh, when an army tends to uh, to have so many of its own people killed, they start sucking in people from anywhere? How many of you remember the 12 and 14 year olds that were taken in at the end of World War II when uh, the Third Reich was going down? Well. This is just another way to get more people into the, uh, into the military to become cannon fodder, for one thing. Second of all, this is, you, you are, again, it, let's pretend it's wrong to say this. It's fine, it's true. This is going to make a l more straight people not want to join the military, and there's not enough people in dresses to make up for all the straight people that won't join. That's just fact, whether you like it or not. The Defense Department's current regulations regarding transgender service members are outdated and are causing uncertainty that distracts commanders from their core missions, Ash Carter said in a statement. At a time when our troops have learned from experience that the most important qualification for service members should be whether or not they're able and willing to do their job, our officers and enlisted personnel are faced with certain rules that tell them the opposite. Why do you have to do your job in a dress, even if you are into that lifestyle? Why do you have to f make everyone looks the same? For a reason. Because that is the way that a military runs. And if you don't like that regiment, then don't join the military. We don't conscript people in this country anymore. We don't draft them. So if you don't like it, then don't join. If you, if you guys want to band together, then band together from a militia. It's your right to do so, believe it or not. I'm in favor of it. I don't care what someone dresses like, but this is simply not going to work. And, and if it does work, they're going to force it down our throats. You're just going to see less straight people joining, and that'll be the straight people that are really weirded out by it. And again... It's not going to be compensated by the ones joining. There's not enough numbers on the other side there. He said a working group formed the study to policy. I wonder how much it's going to cost. Will be led by his personnel undersecretary, Brad Carson. It will operate under the presumption so-called transgenders are capable of serving without adverse impact on military effectiveness and readiness, except and unless where objective practical impediments are identified. In other words, they think it's not going to matter at all. I'll tell you what, yeah, yeah, how many people listening to this are in the military that would like their bunkmate to be in a dress? Those that wouldn't care, it's fine. Would I care? No, I think it would be weird, but I wouldn't care. But, again, this is a distraction from what the military does, which is protect the nation. I'm not saying you can't be a hero and wear a dress and be a guy. I'm just saying this is not the place for it. You know what? It's also not the place for Metallica t-shirts. I love passing time. It's my band. I started it from nothing. I love my band. Should not wear a passing time t-shirt in training in the military. No, you got fatigues. Good Lord. It said, uh, the working group will also look at the possibility of the United States military paying for the medical costs for surgeries and other treatment associated with transgender or gender transition or reassignment surgery. And also, now you're going to have people joining the military to get their schmeckle cut off. And that, that, that's an incentive. That's great. That's, that's exactly what we need to be paying for. Not, not, not better armament for the troops. Not better safety for the troops. Not more accurate drone technology. No, no, no. We need, to, we need to pay to have some guy get his wang cut off in the military. Guarantee that's going to terrify ISIS. I thought it was funny when they had the scorpion bomb. This is even more pathetic. The move toward integrating transgender people into the military has support in Congress and is backed by Representative Adam Smith, ranking Democrat, no surprise there, of the House Armed Services Committee. It's also supported by another, no surprise, Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel. I'm open to those assessments because, again, I'm going back to the bottom line. Every qualified American, yada, yada, yada. The point is it's going to be a distraction to people whether it should be or not.
Okay, maybe it shouldn't be. I don't really care. I, I go to clubs. I go to raves. I go to things of, of the nature all the time. I, I my, One of my favorite bands is the Thrill Kill Cult, and I just went down to see them on some gay day. I don't know what the hell it was. I was delighted to see them. God bless them. I, their last CD was great. If you don't own Spooky Tricks, get it. The point is, that is not the military. The military isn't Metallica t-shirts, it's not dresses, it's not getting your schmeckle cut off, it's not getting a schmeckle cut off, uh, sewn on. It's about protecting the American people. And they demand a certain kind of uniformity in there. And if you can't handle that, then you know what, for other reasons, neither could I. And I didn't join. Friends, you're listening to The Correct View. Sam I.B. DeGange signing off. Make sure you look up uh, the mediaspeaks.com. Look up the work of Kyle, Court, D. Lake, and myself. We're posting all of the time. Also, if you can be so kind as to donate to the show, you can do so at The Correct Views at Hotmail.com. I'll let you know where to send it. Every penny that you give to me goes towards a better show. And uh, again, got, we're in the process of getting our graphics back. We have new lights in here. Everything's looking great. And it's because of you guys. So thank you so much. Good night, friends. God bless.